Hi, I'm Tony, and this is the story of the build of this 31 foot 8 inch J. Benford designed cruising sailboat. From the lofting of the lines to her emerging from the boat shed to receive her keel, masts, and all the other paraphernalia that make up a cruising vessel. Join us on this adventure as we build to patch her and hopefully set off to test her out as a liverboard cruising vessel. Oh, I'll. Um, yeah, I was going to say a few words, I think, at the start, because um, I've noticed a few times in this build that when you get to a, a major stage in the build, and last week was a major stage in the build, you know, I've got the engine running, and that I've been, you know, slightly concerned about that for a long time. I bought that engine second hand from a a supplier in the UK who did a great job of, of supplying it, shipping it out here, or organising the shipping at least. But I put it in, um, you know, there were one or two issues with the wiring loom that came with it that I had to go through, sort out. But I fitted the engine, but you still don't know how it's going to be, do you, until it actually fires up. I had the feeling that the compression was low, but I think it was probably just a bit of rust on the valve seats or whatever. Um, because when it came to fire it up, I put a little bit of oil down the inlet valves, took the air cleaner things, just the gauze, took that off and poured a tiny bit of oil onto the top of the inlet valves. And the way she went, lovely. So I say that was a massive, major stage in the build. And what I was trying to say earlier is, is that I've noticed that when you get to a major stage and you complete a major stage, it, you, it's a bit of a... You, you're sort of floundering a little bit after that. You, you end up doing a little bit here and a little bit there until you find your course again. And this week's been a bit like that. Now, there are two other very big things happening though. I have put in the order for the wood for the masts. I finally settled on what sort of wood to order. It, it's spruce I've ordered. Um, 80 by 80 lengths five metre lengths, which we shall need scarfing to get obviously, but it's ordered. They didn't have it in stock, so it'll be a week or two till it arrives, but that's coming. And this week, this coming week, no, not this video, but next week's video, there'll be, I believe, a very big development, so uh, I'm not gonna tell you about that. You'll wait for next week for that. But this week, obviously, the old keel that I'm sat on here is, is needs finishing off, needs some paint on it. So the first thing I did, as you've just seen, was to run a bit of glass tape, which is a bit of glass I cut myself to tape dimensions <laughs> around the joint between the two wood bits, just, just to seal it. It's not structural in any way, just goal is to seal it. And then I've sprayed some light filler on here, 
um, and sanded the back flat. Sadly, I didn't have enough light filler to do the whole thing, so I've done the bit that I had enough for, and I had to order some, and it's actually, I've just picked up the packet now, so it's just arrived. So I'll be getting the rest of that done. It's lovely and flat now, feels good. I also ordered the epoxy primer sealer for it. We'll be getting that on as soon as well, this week, no doubt. So, that's where we started. So I've filled the diesel tank up and after a day, it's supposed to expand for a day and then uh, and then it stays that size for the rest of its days. So uh, it's now ready, I want to get some foam in. I've got these plastic bags, freezer bags in there. And I want to get some foam in there just to make it sure it's securely in place and it can't move. And I'll put the, the foam in freezer bags so it doesn't make a god awful mess. And I've got this two component foam obviously because single component foam won't set off in a plastic bag it needs air so hopefully this 2k one will let's find out We will see how that comes out. and see how it dries.
so that was the, the diesel tank foamed in and also epoxy sealed and painted the, all the boards for the lazarette there and we'll be once they're finished we'll be getting them fixed in they're nearly done one more coat on one side and then something about this hatch had been bothering me a bit it, um, it dripped in a little bit if the if it was a heavy rain and, and uh, the wind was in the wrong direction so the first thing I did I, I put a batten along the front of it just to bring the, the rain out a bit rather than dripping right into the gap here and then I adjusted the top of this board this washboard just to make the gap nice and tight it was a little bit big on one side so I say adjusted that to make it a nice fit and hopefully that will solve the problem time will tell I've also been sorting out a bit of hardware and thinking about rigging so if I grab the camera and up there I've got they're only laid there those cleats so I started to think about the rig which is all very exciting So just trim this piece off of here. The goal is to try and make the gap along the top even and small. Small and even. I think it was that way around, wasn't it? It was. That's the way it was. So just trim that off here, little wedge shaped piece. And I'm going to glue a piece on the top of there. And hopefully everything will be hunky dory.
slide it down. I'll have a bit of wood in place. That's it. And just a bit. Not, it's not. It's not right at the bottom. Just loosen it off a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Now, now, good. That's perfect. Yeah. Don't need to be ridiculous. Just nip it out. Then we will get one on the other end as well. Oh, there you go. Got one there. So this is all set off nicely and I'm pleased with that. The foam stayed in the plastic bag so it hasn't spread out and made an awful mess and the tank is nicely located, supported now. So get the top board on there, cover it all up. So we got the uh, uh, 40 meters. 40 meters yeah. Yeah. And we reckon that's going to fit in that box, don't we? Catch, it's a really good one. <laughs> Perfect, huh? And we we'll just put a new halyard on the aft side, aren't we? And the swim ladder is in progress. We've drilled, filled. I'm waiting to re-drill for the fit in this lovely swim ladder, haven't we? Yeah. And of course, the inevitable trip, or well, it seems to be recently, the inevitable trip up the Hazel's boat last Sunday. Getting there with that, we've got uh, that swim ladder still to fit. And then the solar panel, two solar panels to go on the aft rails, a new battery to go in, and then she'll be ready to go. So we're nearly there, which is, very good and she's very excited and that's it for this week uh, thanks for watching all that YouTube stuff you know um, and we'll be back next week with well well I'm sure for me at the very least will be some very exciting news see you then